Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Night Run Studio and in this new series, we're working towards making a shop system. Along the way, we'll add an inventory as well as item collection. In this first video, we're focusing in on the items. At this point, they're not necessarily going to do much, but you will be able to collect them. They'll be animated to hop up into the air and we're gonna use scriptable objects in order to give them data that we'll use later on. For example, you'll be able to put a loot prefab into your scene and once you create a item scriptable object, you can decide what stats it should have, what image, name, that sort of thing. And when you pop the scriptable object onto the loot prefab, it will automatically take on the sprite and name of that scriptable object. That's where we're headed in this video. Let's get started. Now, before we go making our loot, we're gonna need the data that fills it. So let's start off by making our item scriptable object. I'm gonna head into my scripts folder where I'm actually gonna create a brand new folder. I'm gonna call this one inventory and shop. We'll open that up and I'll create a new C -sharp script, which we'll call item SO. Now scriptable objects do not derive from mono behavior, so they don't have start or update methods. We'll also change the mono behavior line to scriptable object. Additionally, we want to have a drop down menu in game where we can select when we want to create new scriptable objects. So let's come above our class name here and we'll just type create asset menu and we'll give it the file name of new item. So let's begin by making a public string for the item name, as well as another string for the item description. We want to give visual identity to this object, so we'll also have a public sprite, which we can just call icon. I always like to test early so we can catch mistakes as they're happening, so let's pop back into Unity. And I'm just going to create a new folder, first of all, which I'll call item SOs. We'll then head inside of there, and we should now be able to go create, and we should see the item SO option appear up at the screen. I'm just gonna create one here, which I'll call Mushroom. I'll give the in-game name also Mushroom. I'll select an icon. If you're using Tiny Swords, it's strangely labeled as 03. And then I'll also just write in a little description. Though you'll notice that the description box is very small. If you'd like to make that description box a little larger, you can just come in front of the variable here and go text area, though make sure that you spell text as it's actually spelled. Now you'll have a much larger box that you can work with. Now at this point, we're ready to add some more data. First of all, let's make a public bool called isGold. Now we can get into our stats, and I'm just gonna make a header here, which I'll call stats. If you've been following along since the stats manager video, you will have a manager here with a bunch of stats already. Just select the ones that you want to be editable by items. For example, weapon range or knockback might not, but things like damage, speed, and health probably will. Now we'll just give this an integer for each stat that we want to be able to change. So I'll make one for current health, max health, another for speed, and finally one for damage. Now you might want to have some items whose effects are only temporary, so I'll make another header here for temporary items, and we'll make a public float this time called duration. Later on, we'll be able to put a number in here, and that will make it so that this item only lasts for a set amount of time. You can check if you're on the right track by clicking on your scriptable object, and you should see all those stats now. Now next up, let's head back into our inventory and shop folder and create a new script, and this one will be for our loot. Now before we get into that script, let's actually make the game object. So in our hierarchy, we can right click. We'll create an empty game object, which we'll call loot prefab. We can then right click on that object and add a 2D sprite. And in this case, I'll put a circle in here. The reason we're doing this is because we want a child, which will handle the visual identity of the object. And then we'll handle all the logic and physics on the parent. This will become especially important when we animate our loot pickups. Now to set up the loop prefab, we're gonna to wanna to add a collider. I'm gonna use a circle collider 2D and I'll just set it to be a trigger. That way things like my enemies won't be bumping into them. We'll also add an animator as we'll need that shortly and our loot script. With that done, we can head into the script itself. Now we won't need the starter update method so we can get rid of those. And now let's make a reference to that scriptable object we just created. Next, we're gonna actually want to give the script access to things like our sprite renderer. So we'll make a public sprite renderer called SR, as well as a public animator, which we'll just call anim. Quantity is going to be handled through this loot object. That way you can have some mushrooms that when you pick them up, you get five, and other times you only get one. Now the first thing we wanna do is make it so that when we add the scriptable object to the loot game object, it updates its image and name. We'll do this in our onValidate method. And here we're just gonna start with a null check. So we'll type if item SO is null, return. Next, we can just make it so that the sprite renderer sprite is equal to our item scriptable objects icon. And then we'll also make it so that this game object's name is equal to the item scriptable objects item name. Back in Unity, we can click on the loot prefab now and actually add some things. So let's start by dragging our animator into that slot. We'll make sure that it can talk to the sprite renderer, which is in the sprite child object. 
we'll give it a quantity, and finally make sure to select a scriptable object. And you'll notice as soon as we did that, it should update its name as well as its sprite. All right, so we're now updating the object's name and sprite on the map, but it's not actually doing anything yet. So let's animate it so that we can pick this object up. I'm gonna go to my Animation tab, though if you don't have that yet, you can just go to Window, Animation, and select Animation. At this point, we'll make sure that you are on the parent object of your Loop Prefab and hit Create. I'm gonna go into my Animations folder, and I'm just gonna call this one Loot Pickup. Now, while this animation is on the mushroom parent object, it's actually the child sprite that we're going to be doing the animation to. So now we can hit the record button, click on the sprite, and first thing I wanna just do is set its order and layer to a really high number. I'm gonna go with 50. That way I can be sure that it will appear in front of the player. I'm then gonna to head to about the five frame mark, and I just want the item to hop up in the air. So we'll grab our transform tool, lift it up nice and high, I'll then click on my Scale tool, and I'm just going to stretch it out nice and tall, as well as nice and skinny. This will give it a nice cartoony squash and stretch effect. At this point, what I want it is for it to hover at its apex for just a little while. So I'm going to, first of all, set our sprite render back to 1, so now when it drops, it'll fall in behind the player, and then I'll head to the 10 frame mark on my animation. At this point, I want it to just kind of come up a tiny bit more, sort of floaty, and we'll also have it go back to its normal size. So if I open my transform, I can just set its X and Y values to one and one. Now as I slide across, it gets tall and skinny, and then at the top, it sort of squishes back to normal. We're now ready to come back down. Now I want the object to fall slower than it jumped up in the air, so this time we'll give it 10 frames to do its fall. I can just set its Y position to zero so that it goes back to where it started, However, throughout the course of this, we actually want it to stretch again. So I'll just go to the end here where I'm going to stretch it out once more, nice and tall and skinny. And so now it stretches into the air, kind of goes back to normal, and then as it falls, it stretches out yet again. Now the one other effect we can do here if we like is we can make it so the object actually fades out as it falls. Now to do this, we'll just go to the end of our animation, click on color, and drag our alpha all the way to zero so that at the end it's fully transparent. However, now it's gonna start fading out immediately, which we don't want. So let's go back to our apex, make sure that we take our alpha to full at that point, so that it only starts fading as it falls downward. That's looking pretty good, though obviously we don't want this thing looping and hopping up and down over and over again. So I'm just gonna type in loot, click on the animation itself, and turn off loop time so that it only plays once. Now next we'll click on the mushroom and go to our animator pane, and you'll notice that right now loot pickup is the default action. So if we pressed play, it would just Play that animation right away. We don't want that, so let's create a new empty state. We can call this one idle, and then we're just going to right click on it and make sure that it is the default state for this layer. I'm also just going to sort of reorganize things here. I'll just move loop pickup up to the side here. All right, with that done, we're ready to head into our script and activate this. Now you'll probably remember that we set our loop prefab to have a trigger on it, so here we're going to use our on trigger enter method. We'll just do a quick check whenever something hits the item to see if the collision, and here we'll just do a compare tag to check that it's player. Now if in fact the item has been hit by the player, we want to trigger that animation. Now we don't want the item hanging around on our map after we've picked it up, so let's also destroy the game object. Though if we did it like this, it would destroy itself before it has time to play the animation. So we're just going to add a comma here, and our animation currently lasts for about 20 frames, which is about a third of a second. So let's give it half a second so that we can know it will safely finish the animation before destroying. And just before we test, make sure to click on the player and just double check that you are in fact tagged as player, otherwise the item won't know when a player is collecting it. Now when we get in the game, the mushroom starts off idle, but when we collect it, it hops up in the air. All right, looking good. Now I realize that the items aren't actually doing anything yet, but we don't really want them to. These items will be usable from our inventory, so we'll add that functionality during the inventory videos. That said, we do want to just make sure that we make this into a prefab before we go any further. So let's click on our prefab folder. I'm just going to drag my mushroom down in here. And since I want this to be a generic loot prefab, I'm just going to make sure that I take the scriptable object off and then rename it as loot prefab. Now, if you want to, you can go ahead and play around with this, adding a bunch more objects into the game. I just created some extra scriptable objects here, so I can drag my loot prefab in, just change the scriptable objects, move them onto my map, and now I can walk around and collect them. All right, I hope you found that one helpful. I know we're just getting started here, but we're set up nicely now so that in the next video, we'll be able to start on our inventory system. I hope to see you in that video. Until then, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.